What do you do when you run out of space on your desk for Mac peripherals? Well, you put them on the floor, of course. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to set up USB foot pedals with your Mac. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. Now, my desk is getting a little bit cluttered. My uh, loop deck just arrived yesterday, and then I've still got my, obviously, stream deck, my beloved stream deck. <laughs> the loop deck hasn't taken over that spot yet. Uh, and then also my uh, Space Pilot Pro. So, uh, yeah, the desk can sometimes get a little bit cluttered, can't it? Let's have a little look. <laughs> there's my stream deck. There's my loop deck. And there's my Space Mouse my mouse, and then obviously we've also got the Logitech pointer. The thing about all of these devices is I've only got two hands. I can only possibly use, uh, <laughs> well, maximum of 10 things at any one time, <laughs> but unlikely that'll be pressing them all. But in, in any case, what do you do when you still need to perform some actions and you just haven't got enough fingers to do it all? Well, this is where these come in. USB foot pedals. <laughs> now this is a low cost sort of generic foot pedal that you can get from Amazon. It's about $40. In fact, it's exactly $40. No, it's not. It's one cent less. So let's have a little look, shall we? Here we go. It is the, the uh, well, I, I won't even bother reading that, but that's what they are anyway. <laughs> $39.99 on Amazon. I'm sure there are other deals. I've looked and there are quite a few different options actually for the same sort of stuff. They're all basically the same from the same source manufacturer, but then they're all just obviously branded differently. But they are just sort of non-branded as I've, I've, I've just said that they're branded they are pretty much non-branded generic uh things the uh the build quality of them is not the best it's not going to uh uh, it's certainly not up to sort of stream deck standards or anything like that. Uh, but for what they are, for basically something to put on the floor, then uh, <laughs> it's more than adequate as far as I'm concerned. So basically, the way that this works is it is basically just simulating keystrokes. Uh, and I can, in fact, prove that if I just pop this one up here, then basically if I just come and click this, I'm in mean, a little notes app. So if I just uh, come here and uh, press this one, you see that's A, this is B, and this is C. So uh, that is the way that this is mapped at the moment. And that's uh, that's all very well if I want to type A, B, C all day. But if I want them to do something else, then we're going to have to do a little bit of work to get it to do what we want. Uh, incidentally, what I do want it to do is I want to use it uh, for controlling Ecamp Live when I am presenting and things like that. Not for this channel where I'm usually just sat down with my stream deck in front of me. But I do, do use Ecamp Live for other things, you know. <laughs> and one of the things I use it for is uh, for generating course material and presentations and things like that and for a lot of those instances I'm not actually sat at my desk believe it or not I do stand up from time to time I have legs as well even though you don't really see them <laughs> so um, when I'm doing that though I will often be using a uh, little Logitech remote uh, and you can map this to do anything else you want it to. And in fact, I left a, uh, a video or I will leave a video link in the top corner and in the description um, all about how you can remap this using Keyboard Maestro if you want to use it to control Ecamm Live. Uh, and that is the uh, video editing software that I'm using. Not video editing software, is it? No, 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 it's not. There's no edits here. <laughs> Ecamm Live is the live production software that I use to make these videos on the fly with no edits, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> it's a Mac only application. I did go down the OBS route originally, but I saw sense <laughs> and I came round to Ecamm Live. It's such an intuitive application and it is a pleasure to use. And if you head over to takeonetech.io slash Ecamm, you can get a free trial there. You'll probably know this if you are a regular viewer of my channel, but if you're not, then you'll notice that probably about a third, two thirds rather of my content is all related to Ecamm. So if you do give it a try and need any tutorials, then uh, just check out the rest of my channel for all of that as well. It's a delightful program <laughs> and I highly recommend it. I use it every day actually, not just for this channel, but as I say, for creating presentations. I use the virtual camera to up level up my Zoom game as well uh, and for Teams meetings and things like that. It really is a great bit of software. <laughs> so um, that is what I uh, I want to use these foot pedals for for when I am using my uh, Logitech remote to control my presentations and things like that but then I also want to be able to do things like uh, start Ecamm Live a recording or pause or things like that so that is the reason that I got these foot pedals and uh, I'm quite pleased with them so far to be honest because they do exactly what I wanted them to do I have to confess I was a little bit concerned when it arrived and it got this really strange object in it 
It's sort of like a shiny uh, coaster with a hole in the middle. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I have got a glass that will just about fit on it. In fact, I've got my Ecom Live glass. <laughs> there we go. It fits perfectly. Um, so I was a bit concerned. I don't know how many uh, modern computers ship with uh, CD drives these days. <laughs> uh, so I did wonder if there was going to be any issue with it. But I figured if it's USB and it's got some sort of input, then it's basically just a keyboard, isn't it? Uh, albeit a three key keyboard. So what we need to do, though, is actually do a little bit of work to get it uh, working the way we want, because we do need to remap the keys on it, because I've, as I say, I don't want to be just typing A, B and C. So uh, the application that I am using to do that is an application called uh, Caribbean, uh, Caribbean Elements, rather. <laughs> and I'll obviously leave, leave a link in the description. It is a um, free software. It's open source software. Uh, and as you can see, it does actually work on uh, Monterey. So it's nice to see that it is up to date. Um, and so, yeah, just download that and run that software. Uh, and that basically looks something like this. So here we are now in the software. Now I should just point out actually that when you do install it, it is going to ask you to give permissions in the system preferences. And this is one of those sneaky ones. It's not really sneaky, but it uh, always catches me out. <laughs> so when you go into your security and preferences, uh, it is going to ask uh, permission to go into your uh, privacy and then it will be one of the ones that is requesting uh, input monitoring because it is basically watching for keystrokes and things like that. So that is why. Uh, and what you'll notice is if I just type in my handy password <laughs> there we go um it is it just appears here so you've got carabiner uh, grabber and carabiner observer so those are the two little things that you need to check but the extra one which sometimes catches me out which is why i said it's sneaky it's not sneaky really but sometimes what you'll find is in the general tab here there'll be an extra um box here that you have to check just to give it permission at this level as well and um, so uh, you will need to do that it does prompt you to do it in the uh, in the software but sometimes it's you can actually click past it and then if you haven't clicked in here then it still won't work and you might be wondering why because you've gone into the privacy section i say you i'm talking about me i do this quite regularly <laughs> uh, and in here you see well i've checked it everywhere but why isn't it working and it's just this little extra one that you have to check in the general tab but in any case, once you have installed it, uh, and by the way, when you plug the foot switch in, then what you'll see is that it will uh, just come up as a keyboard and it will do that thing where if you've ever plugged a USB keyboard into your Mac, it tries to identify what type of keyboard it is and it will say press the, you know, the right shift key or the left shift key or something like that. Just click past that because you'll never get it to recognize it because it's only got three uh, keys on it. So you can just click straight past that. Uh, but when we come into Carabiner here, um, there's lots of different functions you can do in here and I'm not going to go and do a full uh, rundown on this application itself um, because it's uh, it's it's, it's more than we need for our use case at the moment. All we want to do is some simple modifications to basically remap those three keys so that they're no longer A, B and C. And so what we're going to do is we can see the target device here uh, and you can add in different uh, sort of mappings here uh, and you can either apply them to all devices or you can apply them to specific devices, which is what we want. Now you can see here that I've got my Apple keyboard plugged in. I've also got a uh, my Logitech MX Master uh, and also a USB receiver for Logitech, uh, a Logitech mouse as well. Um, but then we've also got this mystery one here. No product name, no manufacturer name. Well, that is this one. It is the generic one. <laughs> um, but you can see how it's kind of greyed out at the moment. Uh, and that's because it is not enabled at the moment to be... Um, to allow us to make changes to the mappings for it. But all we need to do is we need to just come over to the uh, devices section here, uh, click on devices, and you'll see that we can just basically check a box to decide which ones we want to be uh, sort of eligible, I suppose, for editing. So what we're gonna do is come up to this one, no product name, and click on that. And now what, what will happen is if we come back into the simple modifications, uh, you can see that now we can actually select that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that one. And then I basically just need to modify the three keys, don't I? So I'm just going to click on add item. In fact, let's just get them all up there. So these are the three keys. Uh, if you remember, I just checked the mappings of them and they happen to be A, B and C. So all I need to do now is I'm going to change from one key to another. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to change this from A. The next one was letter B. Uh, I'm, this is going off the screen, I realize. Let me scroll up so you can just see. There we go. There's a big long list here of all the potential keys. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to come back up here and select, where's it gone? C. So now I've got the uh, A, B and C uh, from the uh, foot pedals. 
and what I want to do is change that and so I'm going to actually for you could use uh, a number of ways of uh, do this a number of ways actually you could use the built-in mapping in uh, Mac OS uh, but I'm actually going to use a keyboard maestro because the built-in uh, mapping in Mac o OS <laughs> doesn't let you change it on an individual input device uh, basis um, but then you could you just have this as going to a particular key so for example uh, like in Ecamm Live for example the application that I'm going to be using it in you've got page up and page down is uh, go to the next scene and the previous scene so I could just come down here and I could change these to uh, the page up and page down keys that would be one way of doing it but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use keyboard maestro so I'm going to assign a key uh, to these which um, really isn't used at all at the moment on my Mac and that is these really high number function keys so uh, they just go in fact I haven't even got an F20 on my keyboard but I can still um, assign it here so I'm going to press F20 uh, in fact, let me let me do these in a logical order, shall I? <laughs> I'm going to make uh, the first one F18. I'm going to make the next one F19. And then I'm going to make the last one F20. Like that. So now we have mapped those keys. So now instead of those keys on the foot switch being uh, ABC, they are now F18, F19, F20. So that is as much as we need to do for configuration of the foot pedals. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to Keyboard Maestro. And what I've done in here is I've created a folder for my foot pedals uh, and I'm basically going to add my three commands here. Now I could actually create multiple commands and uh, there would be ways that I could sort of switch between them but I'm going to keep things simple for the moment. Uh, so the first one I'm going to call uh, pedal one uh, and I will know which one it is. I'm going to go left to right. <laughs> so this one is pedal one. Uh, this one is pedal two. Uh, and I'm calling in that rather than the actual functions, just in case I do want to just reassign them at a later date. So we've got pedal one, pedal two, pedal three. Okay, so now I need to assign the triggers. Uh, and so if I click on the new trigger, by the way, if you are unfamiliar with Keyboard Maestro, I'll leave a link to the introduction to Keyboard Maestro that I did up in the, uh, the top corner. Uh, this that we're going to do now is kind of at a very basic level so uh, it should hopefully be easy to follow along with so I'm not going to do a full introduction to uh, keyboard maestro itself uh, but I can just quickly I suppose tell you <laughs> the basics we've got some groups of macros here uh, and then in each group you have this column here which is the list of the macros within that group which is why I've just grouped together all of the ones for my foot pedal uh, foot pedals rather uh, and so this is the macros and then in this window here you have basically what's going to happen when the macro is triggered uh, and you have uh, two sections really you have any of the uh, or rather you have the trigger section which is where you set what happens to actually trigger the macro uh, and then down here you have what happens once the macro is triggered so that's where you can have a whole chain of different events uh, that happen with that trigger but we're basically going to do something really simple because we just want a single trigger which is when we press one of the foot pedals uh, and then we want it to perform an action so the triggers are quite simple to set up because all we have to do is come onto the new trigger and click on that uh, and then there's lots of different types of triggers I'm not going to go through them all but we want the first one which is a hotkey so basically when a key is pressed it's going to trigger the action. So now we've got our hotkey and it's suggesting that we type it in here and you can see that the box is highlighted as well. Now all I actually have to do is press my foot pedal. There we go. I've just pressed my first foot pedal and it's come up with F18 which is good because it shows us the mappings that we did in Carabina are working. So that is F18 and now what we want to do is we want to actually perform an action. So the actions that I'm going to use in this case is the uh, I'm going to have play and uh, or record and uh, stop for Ecamm Live. Uh, I'm also going to have a pause button um, and then I'm also going to have next scene as well. So first of all, I'm going to uh, click on new action for this one. Uh, and then what we want to do is add uh, that's obviously the last action that I'd used. Let me just show you that again from the beginning because we've got all of these different actions that we can add in. Uh, but what we want to do is basically trigger a menu item in an app. Now you can do this with keyboard shortcuts. So I could, in theory, just create a uh, mapping for this key to be the keyboard shortcut for record in Ecamm Live. The only issue with that, though, is that in that case, 
Ecamm Live would need to be the frontmost application and the active application. Whereas this way, I can actually just activate a menu item without Ecamm being the front application. And given that I would be using this whilst doing a presentation with my uh, presentation remote, then Keynote would actually more than likely be the frontmost application. So what I want to do is I want to trigger a menu item. Now you can do a search in here for the actions. Uh, and so what I'm going to search for is menu. Try that again. <laughs> menu uh, and you can see that we've got two options uh, and it's this first one that we want select or show a menu item so I'm going to pop that one in there uh, and then what we can do is you can choose between whether you want it in the frontmost application um, but we want to choose a specific application so I'm going to come down here and choose Ecamm Live uh, it has to be the beta that's what the one that I'm using uh, and now what we can do is we can actually choose the menu item manually so if I come into here and then I come down the list and we can see the list of um, applications and so we can see Ecamm and then we can see uh, recording uh, and then we can see in fact where is the I've just got to see I've never actually gone to it in the menu one one second let me find out exactly where the record button the record menu item is uh, let me have a little look begin recording ah uh, it's in the Ecamm Live menu I see so it's in the first one uh, I've never actually triggered it from the menu so I couldn't just remember where it was <laughs> so if I go to Ecamm Live uh, beta Ecamm Live beta and then you can see we've got this menu item begin recording so I've got to be careful now because if I press this one it might actually just end this recording <laughs> so now that is mapped so when I press this foot pedal it is going to uh, begin the recording now let me just double check and see uh, that that will actually uh, in fact there is a separate keystroke for end recording and there's one for pause so for the time being let's just use those shall we so uh, that is begin recording then let's in that case make the uh, middle one to be in fact what I can do here I can do a bit of a time saving here I've been and created all of these uh, these other two but what I should have done is just create one <laughs> and then duplicate it so now I can just uh, duplicate that macro and duplicate this one so now pedal one is going to be for starting recording pedal two is going to be pause and pedal three is going to be end recording so uh, that's pedal two and the reason why I'm doing it like this is because now everything is all set up in here we've got it mapped to the um, the, the right uh, application and everything like that as well so I'm just going to click in here to highlight the cell and then I'm going to press the middle button like that uh, and then what I'm going to do is come down here now what you can actually do is if you do know the actual name of the uh, the menu there the menu item so we've got one here it's just pause recording all I need to do is just type in here pause uh, do make sure you get that right if you don't then it won't actually trigger it so you might be better to just go through and do it like this uh, but if you are confident in your spelling of uh, <laughs> five letter words uh, then you can just write it because it's it's just telling you here the menu and the sub menu uh, so this is the, the sort of main menu and then this is the sub menu that the menu item ap uh, appears in so we've got that now we've got uh, pedal one and pedal two and then let's come to pedal three uh, and then this one I'm just going to click in here and I'm going to press my foot pedal like that whoops there we go and it's shown up f20 uh, and then here what I'm going to do is just type in end and that is it now what I've got is I've got my foot pedals plugged in over USB and that's all there is to it it literally is uh, is that simple <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do now is just come out of here because uh, that didn't take actually as long as I was expecting <laughs> and I didn't expect it to take a long time so uh, that is that is done now we've now got our macros programmed in keyboard maestro they are programmed to my uh, my foot pedals which are here and which now need to go down on the floor I can get rid of that overlay and uh, yeah I can still use my stream deck obviously for uh, this is my Ecamm profile uh, by the way I did a video all about my Ecamm live profile so if you want to check that out uh, and if you like my icons they're all available on my store <laughs> so I'll leave a link to my store in the description as well but uh, yeah so I normally for this channel use uh, use my stream deck to control Ecamm but then I'm doing a lot of scene switching and stuff like that whereas often when I'm doing my presentations and uh, things like that then I don't actually need as many uh, uh, as many uh, controls for that so you can literally remap this to anything though so that principle that I've just shown you there any application you've got where you think you might want to uh, control it with your feet <laughs> if you're that way inclined then uh, these are a great uh, a great idea and yeah uh, $40 
it's uh, it makes my life a little bit easier. So it's certainly worth the money for me. But I'll leave a link obviously to them in the description as well, uh, where you can get them on Amazon. And I hope you found that useful. And if you did, I'll leave a link to it. Now you see, this is what I'd, I, I normally leave a link to some other related content, but I don't have much related to uh, foot switches, funnily enough. <laughs> but I will say, if you have enjoyed this video, then give it a like and subscribe. And if you find my content useful, then the best way to support the channel is to head over to my Buy Me A Coffee page at buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech. And there you can make a one-off donation or become a member and get hidden benefits. <laughs> I'll tell you what the hidden benefits are. They're not actually that hidden. Oh, I didn't need to press that twice. The hidden benefits are if you join at the $10 a month level, you actually get all of my digital downloads forever for free. <laughs> so uh, that would be uh, quite nice because then you could get your nice new Stream Deck icon pack uh, and uh, all the other ones that I make from here on in uh, included in that monthly membership cost. So that is what the uh, uh, that level of support gives you in case you were interested. So I've just figured out, I know what I'll leave a link to. I'll I'll leave a link to some of my other gear reviews over on the right hand side <laughs> and uh, YouTube will pick a video just for you up in the top right so until the next video have a great day